we are now going to start labor. And we need to know the definition of labor. This afternoon lectures is going to be interactive, right? So if we ask you a question, please don't dodge, don't leave the scene. Say what you know. <laughs> because the thing that we will teach is less. It is when you contribute your quota to the learning process that it will stick better for you. So please. And when we ask you a question, don't leave the scene. Try to say what you do. Now I know that this are there. Okay. So we are going to talk about labor. What is labor? Please, if you have an idea, just raise your hand and they will call you. What is labor? We have been saying labor, 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 labor. What is labor? People's hands are up. Yes. Uh huh. Please define labor. The one who stands is our voice the name. Yes. Anybody at all? Uh huh. Labor is defined as the process by which the fetus, placenta, and memories are through the birth canal. Okay. So thank you very much. That is the one definition of labor. Thank you very much. Any other definition for labor? Labor is the process. I think the products of conception are expelled through the bed canal after the 28 weeks of pregnancy. Good. Good. So that is also another way of defining. So in a nutshell, we are trying to say that at the end of pregnancy, we expect the product of conception, be it the placenta, the fetus, membranes, lipoamini, should come out of the uterus. They will say labor uh, is eminent. Okay. Now, let's see. But, what is normal labor then? Because there's one thing, a woman going through labor, and another thing having a normal labor. So what is normal labor? Yes. Those who sponsor, I can't see the, their name, but normal labor can be defined as a process whereby there is a frequent regular uterine contractions. Go ahead. Oh, you are done. And then there is cervical dilatation, normal cervical dilatation in order to expel the product of conception. Okay, good. That is a uh, uh, way of defining normal labor. Okay, so the definitions that they gave for the for the labor itself is right. It's a process whereby the the <clears throat> the product of conception is expelled through the bed canal. Somebody may also define it as uh, the onset of labor can also be a form of regular painful uterine contractions. Then the fetus or the product of conception is expelled. That is also defined as labor. But when we talk of normal labor, then we mean that in normal labor, first, the pregnancy should be at term. We all know what a term pregnancy is. That is when the pregnancy is at the, the 40th to the 42nd <laughs> week. That is when we say uh, labor is at 10. <laughs> okay. So we are Okay, so that is the process of when we say normal labor, the pregnancy should be at 10. Then the line of the fetus should also be in a longitudinal position. The baby should be presented by the vertex. Baby should be presented by the vertex. The delivery itself should be spontaneous in nature. And the baby should pass through the normal birth canal. And it should be born within a stipulated time of about 
18 to 20 hours. So 15, some books are saying 15 to 18 hours, the labor should be completed. Then we say the women give a woman has had a normal labor. So note the definition, the differences between labor itself and that of a normal labor. So that is it. Any question before we continue? So uh, that is the definition for normal labor. As stated Mr. Hafiz, by, can you go over the, uh, the point you just said? The what? The, the normal labor. The normal factors labor. That determine normal labor. The normal labor. What is factors? I'm saying that when we say normal labor, it means that pregnancy, that labor. The pregnancy got to 10. That is, the pregnancy should be at 10. Then the line of the baby should be the longitudinal line. So that if it's bleach, you can say it's normal labor. If it is transverse, you can say it's normal labor. If it's yes, you can say it's normal labor. But the longitudinal line, we expect the baby to be born through the normal birth canal. It should be delivered, the baby should be delivered within a period of 15 to 18 hours. Labor should be completed, right? That means it should be spontaneous in nature. The baby should pass through the normal birth canal, I've already said that. And that there shouldn't be any complication to the baby, nor to the mother. Then we say normal labor has okay. So, that, but there are some uh, certain theories that guides the process of normal labor or labor itself. Mr. Uh, uh, please, at first you said uh, the normal labor should take. 18 to 20 hours. But now you said 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 to 18 hours. Some books are talking about 15 to 20. That means 15 to 18 hours to be a period within which the, the labor should come to an end. Both first, second, third stage, and fourth stages of labor should end within a period of 15 to 20, by uh, 15 to 18 hours. Labor should have ended. That's what I've seen. Now, I okay, said, okay. Just, yes, I said, some books are talking about 15 to 20 hours, but we are taking 15 to 18 hours when the match should be completed. That's what I said. Please, please, mm -hmm. yes, Mr. Please, the number of hours, the duration of labor, does it depend on whether the person is a primary yes. or not? Come on, again. The Come duration on. of labor depends on whether the client is a primary or not. Whether the client is primary gravity or not. Normally, the multiparous have a shorter duration. But the primary gravity, the, for the first pregnancy, primary gravity have a longer duration. We are, we are using the average duration of labor. So, uh, primary gravity can even end up to 24 hours, which, of course, is getting into a normal labor, a prolonged labor. But we are talking within normal range. We are dealing with normal labor, please. Thank you. Okay. So let's quickly look at the, the strategies in clinical decision making when it comes to labor process. It's like the midwife has a responsibility. You have a role to play in a woman who is coming to deliver or in the laboring woman. Girl has mute yourself. Talk about clinical decision making or judgment. But it is a deliberate problem solving activity or process. The midwife is taking a decision and it goes through a process. So that at the end of it all, she has the right to develop or based on some actual findings or certain things that are perceived by the patients. 
based on that, the midwife can take a decision, develop the decision, then implement it. Because if you know what your client is going to, then you'll be able to do what is expected of you as a midwife. Now, the, the, the ability for a midwife to, to be able to take a better decision or clinical decision, it relies on accurate assessment of the patient. You need to assess the client who is coming to deliver or coming to deliver. Do proper assessment, right? And then you'll be able to solve the patient's problem for her. If you don't assess the patient clin uh, clinically, physically, you may be compelled to, you know, you'll be compelled to leave the patient to her feet. And that is not a good midwifery practice. So now, there are certain steps that are involved in this clinical decision making. There are four steps that are involved that every midwife, you should try to inculcate this thing into your management of a patient during labor. And these four steps are, you ask and listen. You are asking the patient question. For example, you are asking, Madam, when did labor start? Have you seen show? Have you ruptured membranes? Have you eaten? They are all part of the asking process. You ask and then you listen. It's not that you are asking the patient and then you are on phone. Then you tell the mother, the woman, Mamoria Kasamiti, Yoga Kosmiti. Meanwhile, your attention is on the phone. Then you are not being a good listener. Neither are you asking the patient what is expected of you. So you ask and they will listen to the feedback from the client. Then you have to look and then feel. What are you looking for? We say we should look. Look at the patient's behavior. Look at her attitude. Look at the way the patient is expressing certain things. Look at her. It is when you look and you feel the behavior of the patient. That's why we say immediately you have to be empathetic. Put yourself in the shoes of the patient. And that is why you keep the feel proper. But if patient is screaming and you are shouting back, patient wants to tell you something, you are not interested in that or madam, ask for labor, everybody goes through labor, pay to pay you, so let it pay you. Hey, we don't do that. So we are saying that look and then feel for the patients. And that is why you can do proper decision making or uh, you try to involve yourself in the problem of the patient by solving them for her. Then you also try to identify the needs of the patient. Identify the need of the patient or the problems of the patient. If you are able to identify, for example, let me give you an example. Like a patient is exhibiting signs of pre severe preeclampsia, that if you are not listening, if you're not the type who can identify problem, you would never know that a patient is having eminent signs of uh, eclampsia, and that in no time, patient will go into eclamptic phase. It is only when you're a good listener, it's when you observe, it's when you look well, it's when you feel for the patient, that you'll be able to identify her needs and then address them. Then, based on these things, the last one, is to take appropriate action. It is when you ask and listen, you look and then you feel, you identify the patient's needs or problems that you'll be able to take appropriate action. And once you take the appropriate action, you are likely to get a live baby from a live mother. That is what we are trying to see. So by this, we are saying that, what do we do when it comes to asking and listen, patient is coming to deliver. When we say ask, and then listen, as we are asking, him, asking the patient, you are listening at the same time. We have asked the question, have patience for the patient. Listen to whatever she's telling you. For you know, she's not even answering your question. She's saying a different thing altogether. By so doing, you don't shout back, but then, you try to assess, is this patient mentally sound? Is it because of the liver pain that she's behaving the way she's doing? 
then you can take appropriate action. This, I hope it's clear. So that is by asking and then listening, and then you answer patients' questions for her. Okay. Then we are saying that look and then feel for the patients. By looking and feeling for the patient, typical example is patient is having vagina discharge. She doesn't know how to describe the discharge. But then she's telling you, you have to look at least. You can ask her, Madam, do you have colonial pad? Yes, Madam. Because you are now for the moment I apply it, it gets soaked. You see, you have to look at it. I think look at the color of the discharge that is telling you. Look for the consistency. What are the contents of the discharge that she's talking about? Is it incopurulent? Is it greenish, yellowish, frothy? Is it offensive? What kind of discharge is she talking about? It's ordinary leukorrhea. It's normal vagina discharge, except that because of pregnancy, it has increased in quantity. You see, it is when you, uh, you have a look at it that you can make a decision, a clinical decision. Oh, the way this discharge is, I'm sure she might be suffering from candidiasis. It has some foul smell. You don't embarrass the patient. Look and feel for the patient. And that is where you can take a better clinical decision. So we are talking about identifying the needs of the patient. That is what I have talked plenty about it. Now, we say you should take proper or appropriate action in dealing with the client who has come to labor. You have to take appropriate action. How do you take the appropriate action? The taking proper action or appropriate action is a first part of the fourth step. The fourth step of the clinical decision making. How do you go about it? You have to, you the midwife will have to take the trouble or decide on what to be done to take care of each problem that the patient is presenting. How do you do that? It may involve giving medication. It may involve giving education on the condition that the patient is talking about. It may depend on giving education, health education, just the health education may be enough <clears throat> to satisfy the patient's needs. So education. Is one aspect of it. Then you counsel the client. Madam, you say you are having vaginal discharge. Because of that, that one part of the education, I'm giving that as an example. But then because of that, use plain water to wash the water all the time. Plenty of water should run there. Apply perineal pad. Please don't be putting your hand inside the vagina in an attempt to wash there. Why? Why? Because the more she introduces her hand there, the more she introduces infection. So teach her how to do vulva, proper vulva toileting. If she can't do it, you do it for her. She has come to labor, she's under your care. You see, so that is what we mean by proper education and then counseling the client on her condition and how to deal with the condition. If there's a need and you think that probably the discharge is so offensive, there's the likelihood that members had ruptured maybe three days ago. It calls for referral. If you are not at the referral points, maybe you are the remote area, then you need to refer for the fear that the, the, the mother will not deliver a baby who will start with ophthalmia minatorium. She's having infection, ophthalmia minatorium, infection or discharges of the eye because of offensive vaginal discharge. That was not treated properly. So these are some of the things that we are talking about taking proper action. It's an example of what I have just uh, mentioned. Then you try to record whatever you do for the client. Learn to record whatever you do for the client who has come to labor. Now let's see the the physiological processes that are involved in labor. The physiological processes 
that are involved in labor. We have already given you the definition for labor, and then what goes into normal labor? The process that are involved to call it or to mention that it is normal labor. Now, let's see the theories of labor. Any question, please? Any question, if you don't have any question, let me quickly go through the theories of one set of labor. Before labor starts, there are certain theories that will have to suffer, that will have to come into play to ensure that normal labor is achieved. So we have what you call the mechanic, uh, what do you call it? The, the mechanical processes and then the hormonal factors. So we have hormonal factors and then we, we have the mechanical factors that helps to initiate labor. But before then, let me solicit it from you. Let me solicit it from you. What are some of the factors, some of the, the hormonal factors that will influence the initiation of labor? Please, anybody, if you know, just raise your hand and then we start talking. I'm talking about the theories of labor. I've already given you a, an idea that we have hormonal factors that will help to initiate labor, and then we have mechanical factors that will also contribute to the initiation of labor. So the mechanical factors. Yes, those whose hands are up on this, I can see it, Benis. Benis. Let's admit this. Okay. Yeah, Florence. Florence, tell me now. Florence, what are the hormonal factors with regards to the theories of content of labor? What are some of the hormonal factors that will help to initiate labor? Florence, please go ahead. Oh, anybody, please, can you hear me at all? Oh, I'm talking in vain. Please, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Ah, okay, if yes, then. Not everybody. Yes, it's a... ah, okay, thank you for hearing me. And then tell me the it's answer. Please, please. please. Prostate landing proceed the service to the okay. okay. I hear you. So the glandes have the service to dilate, okay? It's a hormonal factor. Good. Any other? There is, there is a drawer of estrogen, estrogen and the contraction. If everybody decides to talk, we can't listen <clears> to anyone. The one who muted as a mute action. And then once you see a hand up, the person should send a message to that side. Okay, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you. Okay. So with respect to the hormonal factors, we have estrogen theory. What happens is that during pregnancy, uh, most of the estrogens present tries to present in a, a form of binding, it binds themselves. And then getting to the later part of pregnancy, this estrogen level tends to appear, increasing in the excitability of the myometrum. So when it happens like that, oxytocin receptors get involved and then it comes into play. It is the estrogen that you know stimulates this thing. That is the theory of estrogen. It is the estrogen that stimulates. It gets stimulated, it binds up, and then it starts in increasing the contractibility of the myometrum, that is the muscle layer of the uterus. Then it will initiate labor. Please, I hope that one is clear. Now we also have. Is uh, progesterone, progesterone withdrawal 
theory is also there. It's like we all know that progesterone is being produced by the placenta during pregnancy in order to maintain the pregnancy. But I get into the end of pregnancy, progesterone levels start declining. Once the level goes down, once the progesterone level goes down, then it will cause the aging placenta. What the? Who is that person? So once I'm so Oh, I'm sorry. Hey. Progesterone at the end of pregnancy. That is the progesterone withdrawal theory, is what I'm talking about. This hormone, we are saying that it is designed to promote pregnancy, it maintains pregnancy. Remember, the hope of progesterone is produced by initially, it is produced by the ovaries. But then, when the pregnancy is at its uh, 12th week, after the 12th week of gestation, right, then the placenta might be fully matured to take up the activities of the ovaries. And so uh, the placenta takes over and starts producing this progesterone and then estrogen in order to maintain the pregnancy. But at the end of pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone level will have to go down. And once it goes down, it paves way for a hormone called oxytocin to be produced from the posterior pituitary gland to start the contractions, to initiate contractions to allow liver to initiate or liver to start. So you get the theory. Okay. Now, there's also another theory we call the prostaglandins theory. In fact, it is also another biochemical theory where these prostaglandins will be released. It will be secreted by the area where the four waters are. Please, when you start the mechanism of labor and other things, you know what I'm talking about, the four waters. You know four waters and hind waters. So it stimulates the nerve endings around the surface where the fall water is, and by so doing, it causes to contract and dilate and allow the fetus to come out. So that is the theory of the prostaglandins. And sometimes prostaglandins can also be released from trauma. At the end of pregnancy, it can be released from trauma. Where is the trauma coming from? Not that somebody will have to eat the woman's supplement for prostaglandins to be released. No. But what? Uh, it means is that prostaglandins are found to be present in, in the seminal fluid. They are found to be in the seminal fluid. So at the end of pregnancy, if the woman, the, the, the labor process is delaying, initiation of labor is delaying, the woman can have intercourse at that time, and then the prostaglandins that are found in the seminal fluid can help the cells to soften to initiate labor. Sometimes back at home, the, the old ladies, even though they don't know the theory behind, but sometimes when there's the, somebody is pregnant and she's getting into post term, you see an old lady in the house who knows something about delivery, I mean the labor process, can just say, hey, what time are you going to Sometimes they'll tell you. Go to your husband, your time is almost out. She can see that lightning has taken place. And therefore, if labor is not initiation, initiating, she can tell you, Madam, go more for her, go and let go and let him want you. So that the labor will start. Yes, and that Jana said it, that's a true. She will just ejaculate uh, containing this with her and it will help initiation of uh, the listen. The softening of the service and never can be initiated. So that is what we mean by trauma causing initiation of labor. And not that somebody will have to hit uh, or throw a blow on the abdomen to cause the trauma. Trauma is what I've explained to you. And that doesn't also warrant that the woman should use her hands to do any nasty thing. No. So that is one aspect of it that can also help to initiate labor. Another 
theory. Another common theory is that uh, the fetus also senses that it is time for it to come out. The fetus will also sense that it is time for it for it to come out. And so what the fetus does is that it produces a hormone called cortisol. This is the one making noise. You get that stop. Augustina, Augustina, you are making noise. Augustina. So we are saying that the fetus also produces a hormone called cortisol. The cortisol is coming from the adrenal glands of the fetus. The cortisol is coming from the adrenal glands of the fetus. Where is the adrenal glands situated? They are situated on top of the kidneys. That's where the adrenal glands are situated. And so the fetus adrenal glands will secrete the hormone cortisol. It will be put into the maternal circulation and to help in the contraction of the the what do you call it? of labor, the contraction of the uterus, and labor will be initiated. Please, any question? I'm done with the the hormonal factor that helps to initiate labor. Do you have any questions before I get on to the before I get on to the uh, mechanical factor? Any question? Madam, please, can you go over the hormonal factors? Please, what did we, you Yeah, I can hear uh, you. So, what, tell uh -huh. me one hormonal factor that you had. Just one. Uh, mm -hmm. I, had, I had estrogen, progesterone, and then cortisol. Okay. The, the line was uh, breaking, so I thought maybe there, were, there was more. Oh, That's why. Yeah, there, there's more. We also talked about progesterone withdrawal theory. Okay. I said All right, progesterone thank you very much. withdrawal theory. Okay. Where we say, I said progesterone helps to promote pregnancy, but then getting to okay. the end of pregnancy, it starts withdrawing from the maternal uh, blood, and then mm. once it is not there, it's initiated. Liver is initiated. That's what I said. Thank you very much, Mother. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we also talk. I also talked about Prostaglandin's theory, and that's where I cited a, a woman who is in post term, and a, a grandmother can even say that's just an example. On a lighter note, but uh, it's a reality that the glandes in the seminal fluid getting to the end of pregnancy can also help initiate labor. So that those you midwives in the community realize that a mother will come or a pregnant woman at 10 can even approach you, Madam. I want to come here. I want to come meaning that. I am overdue. My time is past, but I'm not getting any sign of labor initiation. What do I do? So you can you can say that eh, she should let the husband try having intercourse with her that night. And remember to teach her right position, especially if she's a premier grandmother. She doesn't know, most of them don't know any position. To, she can even be a multi woman, but she doesn't know that. The, the, all that she knows is she's lying in the dorsal position and the man is coming. Now your argument is too big. Where will this man lie? Teach them the position she uses. Let the mother teach her that she should rather let her but also change the mark. Okay? No, it may be free. We call a spade a spade <laughs> and not a black spade, right? And yes. Very Teach her that uh, she should rather let her bottom face the man so that the man can punch her from behind. Sister, that is very necessary. Yes, that is how sideways, sideways. Please. Yeah. Can you please go over the estrogen theory again? Are you pregnant? Nah. <laughs> Sister, please, can you go over the estrogen theory for us? Oh, the estrogen theory, I said during pregnancy, most, most of the estrogens are present in a binding form. That's what I said. But later parts of pregnancy, the estrogen are free and it appears in greater number increasing in excitability of the myometrum. 
It causes uterine contraction, getting to the later part. In the initial stage, if they are in a binding form, but later it is released into the bloodstream because it's the hormone. You know, hormones fall directly into the bloodstream. They are tactless. They don't pass through any ducts. They are for every hormone falls directly into the bloodstream without passing through any ducts. Uh -huh. And so getting to the end of pregnancy, the estrogen theory is saying that it will be poor directly, plenty, it becomes plenty in the uh, bloodstream. Whilst progesterone is being withdrawn and causing contraction, progesterone is, 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 is a tendency and then it will help in initiating of the Can I continue? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. So now let's factors. The mechanical factors are talking about uh, distension. Yes. Sister, please, Andrea, my hand is. My hand is huh? Please, uh, with the progesterone. With the progesterone, you made mention about the semen. Of which I'm clear with, but you initially said uh, the progesterone is secreted by the area of the four waters, of which I didn't get it clear. Can you please go over that place for me? Please, who heard this? Please, who heard that one? The area that you heard, can you go over it for me? Can somebody tell, tell us something that I said? <laughs> Please, it said the prostaglandin is secreted at the... Please, one person at a time. I have some more. Please, she, she said the prostaglandin theory. Uh, it helps to soften the service. But... Is being produced in the men's seminal fluid to initiate labor, not the progesterone. The progesterone one is for withdrawal. It withdraws itself to allow labor to initiate. Exactly that. Thank you. Please, not that place. I'm talking about the prostaglandin. The she also said. She also said it is released to stimulate the net around the four waters to cause. Okay. A cervical dilatation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So that is all that I said. All that I said. Please. So with respect to the mechanical factor, let's see the mechanical factor. The mechanical factors comes about as a result of you trying contraction or distension. The intro distends, and the distension can stimulate the nerves. And muscle, muscle layer of the myometrum, you know, to initiate labor. What it means is that. Please, Aja, please, Aja, come again. I'm saying that. I'm saying that the uterine distension is one of the. The uterine distension is one of the mechanical factors that helps to initiate labor. And I'm saying that there's a concept that there's a belief. That any hollow organ, any organ that has a hollow or cavity inside it, when it is stretched to its capacity, it will help to con it will help whatever uh, content that is in that hollow cavity to come out through the contraction of the wall of that organ. For example, the whole, the, the the uterus is a hollow muscular organ, right? So that if there's something in the uterus, because let's say there's a baby, a big baby in the uterus, because it's over distended, baby is big in multiple pregnancy, in polyhydraminos, the baby is so big or the contact is so large that it presses on the nerves in the that hollow cavity, and it will stimulate the uterus to contract. And the labor will be initiated. I hope you are getting it. I've cited so many examples. Yes, yes, it's very clear. Thank you very much. So that's that is what I mean by it. You try distension, distension being one of the mechanical factors for the initiation of labor. Now, the stretch of the lower uterine segment can also 
come under the mechanical factors and can bring about the decision of labor. That is pressure on the cervical nerves. It will stimulate the pituitary gland. When there's pressure exerted on the cervical nerves, it will stimulate, it will send a negative feedback to the pituitary gland. And then it will release a hormone known as, known as what? It will release a hormone known as it will stimulate the posterior pituitary gland to release a hormone called oxytocin. Ideally, it should have come under the hormonal factor, but because it is coming about as a result of the stretch of the lower uterine segments. That is causing the release of oxytocin to come into action on the uterine muscles to stimulate and then liver or initiate. So we are saying that the stretch of the lower uterine segment is to play a role under the mechanical factor, whereby pressure on the cervical nerves will cause the release of oxytocin from the posterior, posterior pituitary. Mm -hmm. okay. Then there are other factors that can also be associated with the initiation of labor. The commonest one, I want to know who can, somebody should just tell us, the commonest factor mm -hmm. that if care is not taken, it can also initiate labor as whether the labor is at term, is pre-term or post-term. It can initiate labor. What is it? Multiple pregnancy. Hyperparesia. 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 Multiple pregnancy is under the overextension of the uterus. I mentioned it. Multiple pregnancy, polyhydraminos. That's why in twin pregnancy, in twin gestation, they tend to deliver prematurely. They tend to deliver preterm babies. It's because the uterus is overstretched. And so nerves are stimulated and it can start off trying on the But we are talking about the stretching of the lower prime segment. And I said uh, there are other factors that can also help to initiate labor. And that is what somebody has just mentioned. That is hyperparesia in a common condition called malaria. Huh? Say it again. Malaria. 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 Yes. Malaria in pregnancy is something that we should treat with all agency as midwives. Treat it with caution and treat it uh, with all alertness. Why? Because what happens is that the, the malaria is going to cause high temperature. When the temperature goes high, it stimulates the fetus. Be the fetus becomes so uncomfortable. And by excessive fetal movement, it can stimulate nerve energy and then fetal compression can be prepared. And then the mother will deliver children. If she's lucky and then the pregnancy is certain, so be it, she will deliver. So we are saying that there are certain common conditions that can also be associated with the onset of liver and hyperparesia from malaria that people don't take serious can cause initiation of liver. Then emotional upset, emotional disturbances. If a pregnant woman is emotionally upset, and that is why as a midwife we have to tend to be a counselor so that if the woman is going through any problem, any marital issue, any in-laws issue, please, we have to counsel her for the sake of her unborn baby. To take it easy, other than that, she can spark off preterm delivery. She can spark off vitral contraction and deliver preterm, especially if the pregnancy is not at stay. And then synoptic attack. Synopsis will come about as a result of anemia. If the pregnant woman is anemic, She's likely to get onset of labor if the pregnancy is not even at stay. 
So we are saying that cyanotic attack can also bring about uh, onset of liver. That is why when you are at term, we don't encourage that you board an air, air, aircraft to travel far distance. We are likely to deliver in the plane because the higher you go, the lower the oxygen concentration. And so you are likely to become silosed and then you can spark you off you try for the dry soon. Okay, so that is it. Any question? If there's no question, let, question, let's see the pre-labor signs. Sister, please, there is a sister, question. Please, sister, I have a question. Have a question. Okay, I have you. a question, sister. Ask you. Please go ahead. Okay, sister, please, about, about the emotional upset. Yeah. Uh -huh. when, a, when a pregnant woman comes to labor mm -hmm. and the pregnant woman is emotionally disturbed or she is having some confusion in the head, mm -hmm. we mostly tell them that they should stop thinking too much because the the, the emotional disturbance could also delay, uh, how do you call it, the labor. The labor because uh, I, 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 yes. And so mm -hmm. I want to know why an emotional upset could uh, cause labor to I mean, establish. Why emotional upset can cause labor to establish? Is that your question? Yes, sister. Oh. And you think it will rather delay labor? It depends on the severity and the type of emotional disturbance the one is going through. If, for example... Because I... Mm -hmm. I read that when someone is emotionally disturbed, uh, uh, emotionally upset in labor, there is a release of a hormone called adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And that adrenaline uh, will cause the contraction to, I mean, slow down. So I want to know why an emotional upset would lead to. Let me explain it to you in two folds. What you midwives have been doing to the mothers and then giving them emotional disturbances, right? It's rather delaying the labor is that, depending on your approach, the way some of us have some sarcastic words in our mouth and we throw it to the patient, it's enough to release the adrenal gland, adrenal uh, hormone. And the adrenal hormones, once it comes to the, the system, it, it has a way of constricting, constricting the blood vessels. When the blood vessels are constricted, remember, that of the cervix and the, the, the uterus will not be exempted. And so that's why, in that instance, you are going to delay the back. Do you understand? And most of the delayed labor process, either first or second stage of labor, midwives are also a contributory factor. Now, let me tell the emotional upset where it can spark off uh, labor. You can initiate labor prematurely. For example, a pregnant woman, and then all of a sudden, maybe she's even in the world working. Then they say, hey, your child has fallen down. He has even lost one teeth. This type of emotional disturbances, eh? It's not going to cause uh, what you call it, concentration of blood vessels. But then it will stimulate a lot of hormone will be poured into the secretion, into the amniotic fluid, into the service area, and then it will initiate labor. So it is in two folds. I think the rest coming from the the midwife is so sarcastic that. It can affect the woman emotionally. And then she will be prolonged. Or depending on the emergency of the news, the type of news that is broken to the woman, you also have to cause preterm labor or initiate labor for her. So that's what we mean by uh, emotional disturbance. So it is in two folds. What that? Is that okay? Yes. Hello. No, please. Yes. Please. Please. Yes. Thank you. No, please. Yes. Yeah. Please come again. I am not a Please, can you see I initiate labor? You can what? UTI. 
Urinary tract infection. UTI can initiate labor because the UTI in its severe form can cause increase in temperature. The woman becomes feverish. And we have just mentioned that hyperparesia is one of the factors, other factors that can initiate labor. So if a woman is having urinary tract infection and is not taken care of, the infection travels to the bloodstream, it can lead to hyperparesia. When there's fever, fetus also feels uncomfortable in the amniotic fluid that has also increased in temperature and it can initiate labor. So UTI can initiate labor if it is not treated. Please, do you understand? Hello, the one who asked the question. Do you understand now? Okay, let's move. Hello, Ajia, please. Last question. No, another please. Question. There is another question. <laughs> please, uh, the intake of herbs that contains uh, oxytocin, can it also initiate labor? Yes. That's abnormal okay. labor. Yes, it can, it can spark off labor. The oxytocin, some of the drugs are very powerful, especially that's why when they give themselves enema, right? They give themselves enema and it can spark off labor. Eh? And the midwife will say, what was when they do beer and they see the meconium stain? It's not as it's so funny. The midwife will then ask them, I'm a sack. They can say all the forgotten about their theories. It is not the animal that is that we are seeing as a green substance. The animal has caused premature neutral contractions. And fetus is not feeling comfortable. And so fetus is in distress and it's part of meconium. And it's the meconium state like one that you are seeing, and you think that is. That she has given enema, and the enema is you are seeing in her life. The digestive system is different from the reproductive system. So, if she has given herself enema, that doesn't warrant that the drugs will be seen on the examining fingers, please. So, sometimes when we are talking, let's try not to be too, uh, I don't know the word to use, but let's try to be more professional. Uh -huh. So that the midwife, the, the patient wouldn't go back to the house say, oh, I don't have a ah. The midwife even examined me and now all the drug was on her hand. No, it's not a good theory, so don't, don't be saying that. Fine, she has given herself enema. You know it, you have seen it. If she doesn't want to confirm, you are telling her that it is causing the baby to pass in the conium, And that is the baby's meconium you are seeing on your examining fingers. Fine, to be accepted. Okay, so let's see the. Uh, Please, I have a question. The pre labor signs. Okay, ask me. Yes, ask Madam. Please. Okay. I'm having a practical example. I'm having a client who is 38 plus five weeks of gestation. Mm -hmm. And then she reported to the facility complaining of hyperparesia mm -hmm. during the day and then at night. Mm -hmm. I checked for RDT and then RDT was negative. That is the malaria. So I decided to treat her for sepsis. I gave her the treatment, and then she came back with a weekly visit, still complaining of hyperparesia. Mm -hmm. The last time we went to a workshop, that was malaria workshop, mm -hmm. and then they were telling us that we can have false negative. So I decided to give her the <laughs> at malaria drug. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what is it? She, she took it, and then she still complained of hyperparesia. So the husband came to me at night that the wife is still feeling hot. Then she was asked whether I can give her infusion. Uh -huh. So please, with this case, I've, I've given her medication for, um, I've given her antibiotics and then I've also treated her for malaria, but yet she still complained of hyperparesia. Mm -hmm. So please, with this case, you know, what am I supposed to do for the client? Oh, you, you should have taken her urine for Ari, urine Ari, and then we'll ask you yeah. see, at least for pregnancy when they come with fever, fever like that, stop the anti after you have treated the malaria, it's not going, especially if she, had, she was not taking the SP, the sofadoxin paramitamide. Don't leave the malaria distant and then do urine Ari. Please, you I did it, the and then protein, protein was negative, and then 
glucose too was negative. No, I'm talking about routine it's examination. Protein. It's not protein that you have urinary tract infection. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Lap, one, lap one. yeah oh, the yeah. leukocytes. Aha. Uh -huh. Not only this urine and then sister, please, I've treated her with I've treated her UTI before. It's kind of care. Care. It's care. Care. It's care. Care. the UTI can mm. care. And that's that is probably what was causing the the, the fever. But oh, one mistake okay. that midwives we do is that after treating all this, did you give any health education as to how to handle the perineal area? Other than that, she will come every day with the UTI. Yes. And the fever, that's why the husband told you that set up infusion and flash her system for her. <laughs> that's why she was telling you that set up, you could have even really set up a uh, normal, what do you call it, desktop water. Flash her system, even if she's not the mm. 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 So, please, most of the time, you may be thinking of malaria, malaria. It's not malaria, but fire. It might be a different cause of fever. Mm? Okay. Because all you know she's developing pneumonia, you can never tell. You can never tell. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... Sister. Well, the... So hey, Beatrice, hold on. Let's just finish. To the highest facility. Yes. Is that okay? Can I continue? Please, let's see the free labor signs. What are the... Free labor signs. The signs that are eminent. Lightning. What? Lightning. Lightning. The question. Lightning. Good. Uh huh. This is the question. What? Frequency. Frequency. Frequency in metration. Frequency in metration. That's the question. Somebody want to ask a question. You want to ask a question? This is the question, yeah. Oh, yes, okay. I had a similar case. Question. And the pregnant lady was four months. And when she came to the facility, she tested for malaria. And the next day, what I heard was that it has been aborted. Mm -hmm. So I want to know why. Maybe is it the parasite or... What I don't understand, sister. Please. Was she still with pregnant? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Huh? Oh, but yes, sister, please, sister. Sister with pregnant and abortion. Did you did you see the fetus? Oh, yeah. Did you see the fetus? Yes, I came. It was oh, continuous. Yeah. Yes, sister. She tested for malaria. It was positive. So the next day, it it came out. Okay. So it could be that it was the fever. That caused the uterine contraction and then she expelled the fetus. That possibility is there. But that's what I'm asking. Did you see the fetus? Please, from the uh, from two months to I'm not, I don't want to use two months, mm. like eight weeks to 20 weeks. Eight weeks. Eight weeks to 20 weeks. Uh. When there's abortion, uh. please, if it happens in the facility, try to examine the baby, the fetus. Most okay. of the time, we have no. Okay, sister. Majority of them are abnormal fetus. That bond is getting rid of them. And that's why she aborted. That okay. possibility is there. So next time, it doesn't matter. You can even ask her to bring the fetus if it happened in the house for you to see. And then take your time and examine that fetus. You see a lot of genital malformation. So that oh, possibility okay. is also there. Apart from that also, okay. the malaria could have also caused the infection. She could have even been suffering from UTI. Or any febrile condition okay. could have caused the abortion. Okay. Okay, sister. Thank you. You're welcome, madam. Uh, can I continue? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, yes, please. 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 please continue. Lightning. And let's see what goes into lightning. Yeah. Uh, during the last few weeks of pregnancy, certain changes okay. You know, before the labor starts, we all know of Braxton Hayes contractions. Yes. As a whole, contractions are painless uterine contractions. Mm. They are painless and it occurs throughout pregnancy. So, getting to the end of pregnancy, it is this Braxton Hayes contractions that is going to increase in intensity mm. 
to initiate labor. Take note of that. Now, the lightning that the lady mentioned is true. It comes about as a result of the effect of Brasenius contraction. And then it we all know Brasenius contraction to be painless. They are contractions already, but it doesn't pain the woman. And so what happens is that it causes the Brasenius contractions at this age of pregnancy will cause relaxation of the pelvic joints. It will cause realization of the pelvic joints. Of course, the realization is brought about by the hormone relaxing. But by the age of the Brasenius contractions, the joint is relaxed. Now, when it happens like that, it paves way, it allows the, 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 the fundal height to be decreased. The fundal height will be decreased. Why? Because the pelvic floor muscles at that time be have become so soft. It has something to the extent that it will pave way for the fetal head to enter the pelvic floor. The muscles have become so soft that it will allow the fetal head to enter into the pelvic brain. And when it happens like that, the height, the pressure that was exerted at the point now becomes reduced. It now reduced. That is what we call lightning. This is what we call lightning. Anytime I'm explaining lightning, it reminds me of RGS. You know, those days, RGS, they were doing obstetric nursing and were even writing it as a licensing paper. So, uh, one school, where I used to teach, then when we got to lightning, then I asked uh, one of them, that what is lightning? I said, Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. So then I asked them, the, the, we can like, hear you. What do you understand by light? Uh, then, you know, RGS, the regular person, they have males in the class. They make the class so light. I don't know whether you have a male midwife among you. You should show up because me, I cherish my male midwives. So if there's a male midwife, you should introduce yourself, himself to me. Now, this guy, I said, what is light? Then he quickly he raised his, his hand. He said, I can't, I can't. Then he raised the hand. I said, I'll tell you what is like. He got back there and said, I'll grab that. I said, I'll grab that. I said, I'll grab that. I said, I'll grab that. So there I said, that is not a good about here. We are talking about lightning where the pelvic joints are relaxed, tendons are now flexible, then the fetal head is going to send and get into the pelvis, paving way for the front to be lighter. And then we say lightning has been because during the time that the front is at the peak. At the 36 week where the pregnancy is at the at the safe is standing. Once lightning hasn't taken place, the woman finds it difficult to be walks a little bit breathless. He walks a little bit and you see them behind walk, 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 Nadia, please, we can't hear you. You can't hear me. Huh? Uh -huh. Stop for is disturbing. Adia, please unmute all of us so that you do the teaching because it is distracting the class. The host. I think she's not the host. The host is there. The host should mute all of us. Stop for Rabbi. Mute yourself. Everybody should mute. Thank <laughs> you. 
techno, mute yourself. Techno. Please let's continue. So I'm saying that that is lightning. And then uh, when lightning takes place, the thunder heights, that is between the thunders and the simplest enemy, can admit two to three finger heights. The lightning has taken place. And remember, when lightning takes place, the head looks feels bigger. On final palpation, it feels bigger and it has entered the pelvis. That's why it has been way at, between the fungus and then the simplest game. Please take note of that. And lightning normally takes place before the onset of labor. Normally, lightning takes place before the onset of labor. And then I said the lower uterine segment will expand to allow the fetus to enter into the pelvis. There will also be frequency of maturation. That is one of the signs of lightning. The you know, frequency of maturation is one of the minor disorders of pregnancy. It's because the fetus and the bladder is struggling for space. And so the little amount that is in the, in the bladder will have to be emptied. That is the early stage of pregnancy. When the bladder is still a pelvic organ. But as soon as yeah. the gravity uterus comes out of the pelvis to become an abdominal organ, yeah. the frequency of nutrition will stop. But when at 10, when lightning takes place, then the fetus will enter the pelvic cavity again where the bladder is. And so the frequency of nutrition will recur. Please take note of this sociology I've told you. That is yes. it. Okay. So that is it. Adia, please, can you come again? So the one who heard me, can you repeat it for me? I beg you. Mm -hmm. Whoever heard me, please, just repeat it for me. Hello. 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 Yeah. Adia, please, you said during the early stage of pregnancy, there is also frequency of maturation. That woman, because the pregnancy is now beginning, the, the baby sits on the bladder, so there is always frequency of maturation. And as it increases, that one will stop. But getting to the latter part of the pregnancy, like when you are getting to labor, the baby, because of the lightning, that baby, the heavy weight of the baby also goes back to the to the to the uh, bladder again because the baby sits on the bladder. And because of that, there is the frequency of maturation also occurs again. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is exactly what I said. Frequency of maturation will recur and get into that period. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, the next thing to talk about as characteristics of uh, pre-labor signs is cervical effacement. When we talk about cervical effacement, uh, it's one of the essential requirements for cervical dilatation. The cervical effacement is different from cervical dilatation. Take note of that. The service has phase, the service has dilated. There are two different things. But some books write cervical effacement to mean cervical. Uh, dilated, uh, sorry, taking up of the service. Effacement is the same as taking up of the service, but dilatation is different. I think I'm right. Cervical yeah, effacement yes. is the same as service pick up, but it's different from yes. cervical dilatation. Okay. So, sister, in cervical effacement, that is where the surface, the surface becomes softened and then it's ripening. Remember, there are connective tissues around the internal cervical os. There are connective tissues. Cellular muscle fibers around the internal os begin to dilate. It begins to dilate. Then when it dilates like that, the cervix then becomes shorter. And it's softer. Initially, the cervix is found at the posterior cervical, uh, posterior furnace of the vagina. Yes. That's why sometimes we are doing V, those of you who are fan of doing V, stop. 
Stop, we will stop. We'll come to that. So, when you make an attempt to do V, if the service is not wrapping, you'll find it at the posterior vaginal wall, at the service, at the furnace, the posterior furnace of the vagina. That's where you locate the service if it is not wrapping, if it is not effect, if it has not taken up. But at the moment it faces up, the moment it is effect, the moment it is it, it takes up, then you can feel the cervical walls at the anterior vagina furnace, oh, oh, the anterior wall of the vagina. That's where you okay. locate the cervix. Please take a note of that. And that explains why we say don't attempt to do vagina examination without timing for the plan contraction. So the midwives are so fond of doing V to the extent that their hands are always ready. You know, when I went to do this, is how you age. <laughs> you see, they use this one to press the forehead and add this one and enter. What would you mean, sir? Would you have my hand in some? What is it? You know, you can't bend it. Like, the hand is ready to enter. Your phone and your hand. So, stop it. <laughs> Stop them on this simple generalization. Always at your service. Means, yeah, they're always ready to do this. Okay. So let's stop that kind of practice. It's not good. It's not good with the free. Okay. Yo. We come to that. Yes, we can come to that when we start the actual labor. So that is the effacement of the service. The service then is drawn up. And then finally, it will be merged. It will merge into the lower uterine segments. What structure forms the lower uterine segments? I'm asking you. What structure forms the lower uterine segments? The isthmus. The isthmus. The isthmus. Uh huh. And what else? What else? The pelvic floor the muscles. Segment. Uh, not really that one. The 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 pubic act. The cervix. The cervix. The cervix. The cervix. The cervix. The cervix. Please, the person playing the music should stop. What is this, la? It's like the music. Infinite, infinite. Your music is disturbing us. If the person is doing that, the one should mute that person. That's all. Do anyone who is making noise, the one to mute should mute that person. Yes. Thank you. The thing is, all of us. So, I was in the process of explaining cervical effacement. I said during cervical effacement, the service that is that can be felt posterior to the vagina fornix, posterior vagina fornix, can now be felt at the anterior vagina fornix. Then the internal also of the cervix will then open up, and parts of the cervical canal will also open up. So in a nutshell, you see that the cervix is like a funnel, a funnel that we use to uh, put things in the bottle. That is how the cervical canal and the internal cervical os will behave. And then we say cervical effacement has taken place. And we are saying that effacement, effacement of the service in a primitive para, it takes up, it starts early enough before labor is initiated. But in some multigravid women and multiparous women, cervical effacement can take place even labor, it is during labor time. That the service will be defeated. So take note of the difference. Okay. There's something we call forced labor or spurious labor. Forced labor or spurious labor. It goes with its characteristics. So let's see the features of a spurious labor 
of false labor. The contractions of a false labor is irregular. Um, sister, please, I have a problem. Okay, ask me. Hadia. Yes. Okay. My network is worrying me. So your voice is cutting. And I want to ask if it will be possible so that um, the slide will be showing so that in case it cuts, then I will still figure out where you are. Ah, you I don't project know. your your slides, do you? Wait, wait, wait. I don't have any slides. My slides side. I don't have the slides here, but uh, I'm yet to, you know, and since you get these slides in the so if I give you the slides, then all these explanations wouldn't be that necessary, will it? Or I'll just be reading the slides and then explaining it. You want it that way? Like, please. It will be, it will be very important. The explanation will help, Adia. Yes. Whichever way you want it, please tell me I'll do that for you. Sister, please, my network. So I am I'm really struggling to. So you want a slide? I think that I think that after lectures, then the slide can be put in the group. So those who are interested in the slide can think the, the explanation is very important to some of us. Yes, yeah, the explanation is very important. So we just play back, play back and listen to what we are saying. Exactly, that's true. But if you still want a slide, the slide is not difficult to get because I, I have it. I have the slides. I will just give you the slide, then somebody will be reading and then we are explaining. Oh, by that time, by this time we have even finished. But I think when you get a real understanding, you ask questions. Yeah, for that's better. Oh, when you ask questions for clarity, it's still better. There are these Chinese that who say that. Please, I so I am not saying I'm not saying I want the slide personally. I I was just suggesting if you can project it so okay. that it be a half of the screen so that I will be following because my network is breaking. It's not all your explanation that I am getting. Um, I'm not asking for the slide so okay. that I can read without the lectures. I'm talking about you projecting it then so that if your explanations are cutting, um, I can see the okay. screen and know where you are, like which side of Okay. That's what I mean. You're Thank okay. you. Okay, no problem. I'll do that for you. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry. Thank you. Don't worry. But then uh, that will take another time for us. So maybe next meeting. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, please. Yes, I please. Hello. Hello. Thank you, sister. I'm listening to you. I'm listening to Adia. you. Yes, please. Aja, please. I'm asking uh, the forced labor. Is it also part of the free labor science? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. The forced labor okay. or the spurious okay. labor. And the okay. spurious labor is forced labor. You see, sometimes a woman will come in complaining to you. But if you know the signs of forced labor, you easily, you can easily tell that it is forced labor. First, you have the contraction, and you see that it is irregular in nature. Irregular. Yes. yes. And then the, the discomfort on the abdomen is localized. Unlike true labor, unlike true labor, where the contractions are irregular, you see, it's irregular in nature, and it's rhythmic in nature. Irregular, and it is painful as to whether the client is lying down or walking about. The contractions will come. That is true labor. But with forced labor, the contractions when the woman is at rest, when the woman is resting, it's like the contractions will cease. When she's up and about walking, then that is when she will feel the pain. This is not a full sign of labor. So get the differences. Then I'm going to direct, please. With respect to spurious labor or forced labor, I'm saying that the contractions are irregular in nature. Okay? Then the, the uncomfortable feeling that the woman is experiencing 
It's, it's, not it's like local land. Yes. You can you, you ask the auntie, which part of your abdomen is paining you? And you can point to a point where the pain is. Okay. And then it, it doesn't affect any cervical dilatation. Unfortunately, but it doesn't affect any cervical dilatation. So get the differences clear. And even when uh, membranes are there at all, they, 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 they wouldn't be bulging with any membrane. The membranes wouldn't bulge. And you can see that it is false labor. It's not true labor. There's no show. She hasn't seen show. But with true labor, with true labor, when contractions are regular, it is painful. It is a rhythmic in nature. So we say contractions are regular, painful, rhythmic uterine contractions, placement of the service, and of course, dilatation of the service. Okay. Then there is show. Oh. Then there is show. Then you oh. know that she is in true labor. And this is true labor. The presence of show is an indication of true labor. Of true labor. Because streaks with blood a lot of it. Have you seen that one? She can easily tell. They have so many terms of describing it. Some of them will say, the banana pump for meaning meaning there's shoot. She has seen shoot. Some will say, I, I saw something like green rock, like mucus, staying yeah. with blood streaks. You know, she has seen shoot. So that's why you can tell her that go home there, cry up. Those of you who are attacking patients to go home and they have been delivering on the way and in the thousand and in the house in gutters. Please, what she has seen show, never ever ask the client to go home. Let her be there. Even if it is prolonged labor, you will manage it. You will manage it. So please never ever ask the patient to go home once she comes. Even if it is true, uh, of course, labor, you keep her there and observe the compassions. So that is it. So we are saying that even if it is smart labor, if it is forced labor, we are saying that you have to be at the clients. And then you try to uh, give her some soothing words. Then you observe her. You observe the clients. Okay. I'm not quite old. Oh, I think I have oh, a can you mute them? Yeah, ask me, madam. Please, from what you are saying in the explanation, between the true labor and the false labor, is it the painful rhythmic a contraction? That is the most important thing to know that labor, true labor has set in. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the most important thing to know? Oh, so it is another important thing that we have to note. But then with the characteristics of food, but there are other things I added. I said the increase in intensity and in severity. The contractions are uh, more I don't constant. know if that is the key one. Yes. That's, yes. That's the one. Okay. Yes. Oh. Mm. Thank you. Yes. And even with the true labor signs, even when you sedate the patients, when patient is sedated, the pain will still be there. Mm. Will still experience the pain. But then if it is forced labor, you sedate it, you fall asleep, and you wonder if it is in labor. And it tells you that it is forced labor. But if it is true labor, you sedate it, the pain will still come, the contractions will still be there. Please, I hope you get it. Please, yeah. Adria, please, I'm a bit confused. Are we um, differentiating between the False labor and true labor, or what? Please. Yeah, anybody, any idea what the what she's saying? Please, can somebody defend that for me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes, yes. Uh, I was part of the necklace. One less and then two merchants are offensive with much pains. No, I understand what she said, Oba. I'm confused. I had an extra Okay, problem. please. Because well, she's not trying to say yes. She was explaining yeah. about the false labor. She was okay. explaining about the false labor and made comparison. 
Okay, then let's go over the effects of true labor. The effect of true labor contractions. The effect of true labor contractions. I was trying to explain it to her, but with the effect of true labor contractions. Contraction produce the following results. Through labor contractions, it produces the following results. There's progressive effacement of the service. There's cervical dilatation. Then the presenting part will descend. The presenting part will descend. There will be rupture of membranes. Even there will be shock. Okay. That is the effects of true labor contraction. What the contractions will do in terms of true labor, the contractions will cause a the contractions will cause a micro dilatation. Contractions will bring about rupture of membranes. Contractions will cause uh, rupture of membranes. It will cause should be seen. So that is the effect of true labor contractions. Any question? What are the significance? Let me ask you, what is the significance of show? <laughs> what is the significance of show? What is the importance? So during pregnancy and in labor, anybody? Prevents a just that there's a question before. The show it prevents ascending infection from the service. It prevents what? Ascending infection from the service. Okay. Show it blocks the operculum. Show blocks the canal. And prevents ascension of infection to the uterus, through the cervix, to the uterus, and to affect the fetus. So it is important that the cervix produces this tenacious mucus to block the cervical canal to prevent pregnancy. So then it tells you that if the cervix is blocked with this tenacious mucus, you should understand that it is not the number of sex that you have that will make you pregnant. Because once pregnancy takes place, then the, at the 16th week of pregnancy, then the show the people will start developing to block the cervical canal. And so the rest that the, the, the rest of the sex that the individual man will have, where will the sperm go? It will come out. It will come out. One woman was complaining bitter that uh, when she sleeps with the husband, uh, when, as soon as she gets up, then the the child will come out, and so that's why she's having challenge with her fertility. She's having infertility because she has sex, and after that, then it's when she wakes up, then the child will come out. I said, Madam, then the child will definitely come out. If it doesn't come out. And this is to accumulate in your vagina. Where do you think you turn it? <laughs> it will definitely yeah. come out. If it is, uh, yes, if, it, if pregnancy takes place, it is only one sperm out of the meals. If it is 10 meals, 10 meals of sperm 
or seminar field that is the chart is only one. That will go and fertilize the ovum. The main thing they decide to stay there. What kind of river are you creating in the Peruvian tree? It's not good. It will definitely come out. So it's not the amount that will cause pregnancy. We have to, when they come to you, explain to them in that way. Any questions so far? So the significance of the show is that, that the head to the cervical canal, cervical mucosa, blocks it and then prevents infection, as we said already. And then uh, yes, the membrane yes, that is overlying the surface is also shed off, resulting in some bleeding. When yes, at yes. the end of pregnancy, this show and this opiculum is dislodged as Please, I hope you can Please, 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 Alia. Yes. Hello. Please, the face of true labor. I could not get all. The effect of true labor. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, please. I want to ask a question. I said the effect of true labor. Full labor, the contractions of full labor. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I said full labor contraction produces progressive investment of the service. Okay. And cervical dilatation, the progressive cervical dilatation. Okay. Okay. Like and then there okay. was presenting parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I said. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I also wanted to ask that is shelter part of free labor science? Okay. It's less in the faces of first labor. Any question, please? Any contribution? Do you want to ask I was asking, yes, I was asking whether shelving is part of free labor science. Whether, whether what? Shelving, shelving. Yes, shelving is, is one of the free labor science where the founders of the uterus Will, will then be moved forward, move forward as the, uh, the upper part of the explosion. What do you understand by shelving? What do you understand by shelving? The one who asked the question. What is the meaning of shelving? This item is the following forward of the uterus. The falling forward of the uterus pandos, making the upper abdomen look like a shelf and that's when the pregnant woman is standing. Yeah, when she's in the standing position. Yes. So, Madam, please, keep, we, we want the definition of shelving again. The one who just said that is doing the shelving. I'm saying that mm -hmm. it's the falling forward of okay. the uterus pandos. Making the mm. upper abdomen look like a shelf. That is man standing. Okay. Um, <laughs> sister, please, question. Question, sister. Ask the question, please. Go ahead and ask the question. You know, I'm like. Ask the question. Oh. Please ask in the question. Ask. Ah, yeah, please let's continue. Why? The person. So that is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is the they come for until Um, some of them complain they shouldn't have sex. Maybe after five. The, the show. The the show is that it's an education please, of. Please now. So when the woman comes to labor, 
Don't forget to ask her, have you seen shoe? Very simple sentence, one sentence, ask her. So that you don't manage the woman if she hasn't seen show. Then you don't ask, manage her as a true woman mm -hmm. in labor. You can still manage her, let her be there. But she hasn't seen show. But the significance of the show is that uh, it, it indicates that the woman is in true labor. That's all. Okay. Sister, please, my question Come on, My question is not answered. I asked when our pregnant women come for antenatal and they are three months or four months. We ask them sometimes they show sex with their partners. But per their explanation, they will tell you the doctor say they shouldn't have sex. Mm -hmm. Maybe after five or six months. So I want to know why. You don't ask the mother. So. You didn't ask them why. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the, the mother, the woman might have the history of uh, successful abortion. It's like probably she's a habitual abortion. She gets pregnant two months she aborts. Three months she aborts. Four months. Sometimes even four and a half, five months. She will just abort the pregnancy. And so, for that matter, this one, they haven't done shortcut switching for her. They haven't done it. But then, they have to say, Linda. If you want to know, Linda. Linda. Hey, please, we should stop these things. Ah. Oh, mute you. If you don't know how to mute it, let's just stick you. Hey. Post, mute us. She's advised uh, not to have sex because sometimes the pressure from the penis on the self service can cause contractions and then <laughs> she can dilate and the fetus will come out. That's why maybe the doctor says she should do it. Or it could also be that another reason could also be that they are treating her for infant. What do you call it? Uh, if treated for sexually transmitted infection, then she doesn't add to it. She doesn't add to it. Probably the husband doesn't want to use the product. Okay, yes, sir. And so the doctor will tell her, then don't have sex for you are well treated from this condition. Other than that, during delivery, it will affect your baby's eyes. People will end up with the rear of the eye. Or if there's any desire to affect your baby's eyes. So there are so many reasons why okay. she not do it. Or she has cervical incompetence, like I explained. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 Thank you, Mister. Now welcome here. So let's continue. Let's continue. Now we have uh, what you call rupture of membranes. Rupture of membranes. During pregnancy, you see the only area of the amniotic sac that is not supported by the uterus is the cervix. I mean, it's a small area overlying the internal os. That is the only area that is not being covered by the membranes. And so unsupported areas will then be increased soon as soon as the uterine pressure uh, uh, I mean increases one will cause the membranes in that area to bulge through the service into the vagina. So that is where you see the rupture of membranes coming in. So we are saying that during labor don't keep on rupturing the membranes. Those of you who are part of rupturing the membranes <laughs> enough. It's not good. Because the membranes in the that it serves to serve as a wedge, support the fetus, the fetal or the presenting part, and it also helps in the dilatation of the cells. Okay, sure. And so don't, don't go about rupturing the membranes. Once to the midwife has taken her arm or mm -hmm. the membrane pierce, she's going to rupture the membranes. Don't do that. The membranes must be preserved 
as much as possible. Preserve the memories. Don't rapture it early during the first stage of labor. Because Sister, please, them, I have another question. If you preserve the memories, we are likely to prevent core prolapse and core presentation, which will be treated under the abnormal midwifery. free. Okay. Now, go ahead with your question. Sister, please, question. So when yeah, the pregnant woman is 40 weeks, and so, and so she's not due for labor, can you do a sweeping for the pregnant woman? Yeah, some, some doctors, some, some facilities, they do sweep. Have you ever done it before? Okay. No, I'm asking. Yes, please. How, and labor how started. Would you yes. Do it? How would you do it? That's good. Mm. Yeah. How, how would you do this? <laughs> yeah, my sister, it's very painful. Huh? It's very, very painful. Yes, I know it's painful. So how do you do it? <laughs> sister, sister. <laughs> Uh -huh. But I know that was you do Everybody. Especially yeah. multiparity uh, women. How do you do it? Do but it for a, a, a prime, we do it. Hello. How do you do it? Lisa, is it good? I just wanted to know if it's it's okay yeah, to do it. How do we do it? She's asking how do you do it? She's asking how do you do it? Do you put your hand inside the service and sweep or what? That's what she wants to know. So let us understand. So we have to put it and sweep around the head. If it's a head. So what is the question on board? The question, the question is about how do you do sweeping? Remember sweeping. You could do a little bit of examination, then you get to the service, then you just sweep around. Sweep, sweep. What do you say for five for service? No, no. Do you enter the service? Do you enter the sweeping? Yes. You enter. You enter. <laughs> You enter the service and strike. So you are like doing the, 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 the membranes. You are sweeping around the membranes. Like you are doing V, then. Before you do it, you will notice the light. You can hear. One person should talk. One person should talk. At a time, you are not hearing anything. Sister, I TV to the client. So you need a client to lie. Then, just like you are doing a time that. Because, like the. Then, you just around the, uh, the head. It's very. So, at times, most people push the uterus a bit forward. Then they would just sweep around it, then like all around for the memories around your fingertips. Yes. Before you do the sweeping, you observe the line of the baby's Host, mute. Oh, oh. Mute. If you are struggling, they don't want to come out with the real procedure. To do the sweeping, actually, I'll sign. Per all that we are saying, hey, now who is, who is that? that? Let me say, hey. oh, Debbie, Gala Debbie, Gala Debbie, Debbie. Oh, from Omo, from Odio, Galazi, you know, woman, or Hagen. Okay, please, I have a concern. There's so many. Hmm. So, with the sweeping, you see, I just mentioned to you that the service, if the service is paid, comes up, and then I'll run up and then we'll go. If the service is not effaced 
and we are making an attempt to locate the external survivor of to enter and do the sweeping of the anesthesia. Imagine the sort of pain that they are inflicting on the woman. Right? Look at the, 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 the little pain itself. And you are introducing your hand into something that has not dilated. For Senate to dilate, enter, and then you are sweeping around. Are you not likely to rapture the members? Those of you who have long finger nails, now we can't have a video of one race. Now the TT patients, why they not? She can't do for free. If the video is giving pinch hair with a finger nail. Hadjia. Yes. Please, uh, uh, something small with the sweeping. Uh -huh. What I know is, I want to do membrane sweeping. You first locate for the cervical dilatation. If service is not effective, you don't go ahead with the membrane sweeping. But if you find out that the service at least is 1 cm dilated or a tip, you try and sweep around the membrane to initiate labor. That is um, the small thing I know about it. You don't go ahead when there's no effacement of the service. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I uh, think yeah, it is more true than for the post date mothers. So no, we don't actually wait to see whether the service has dilated or not, but mostly the gynecologist will tell you that go and do it for the client because the client is posted. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So post Hello. 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 Yes. Hello. 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 I think uh, it would be better for you to do the sweeping at 4 p.m. 4 p.m., 5 p.m. going. Okay. Because some of them may be coming with, uh, uh, sometimes labor may stop. Okay. And you doing the sweeping, it can introduce infection. Okay. So I think sweeping would be Hello, better yeah. around Hello. 5 5 cm or 4 cm going. Okay. Oh, hello, Adam. Please, can you? Labor. Pardon me, excuse me. If she has already initiated labor, then you either document the labor, but I'm setting up the fetus in training. Instead of at 5 cm, we are not going to be going to sweep. Yes. Because she has already started. Because hello, Adam. Can you also of, do memory sweeping when? The Remember fellow is, is, in, is, a, is a at the me. same time a previous CS. If previous CS, the indication will tell. If it is previous CS, what brought about the previous CS? It is the indication that will call for you attempting to allow her to deliver her vagina this time round. So you are doing that, you are saying. Hadia. Hadia. Yes, please. Yes, please. Please, and with the sweep, membrane sweeping too. Please, Hadja, with the membrane sweeping too. Uh -huh. It depends on the estimated gestational age of the client. Okay. If the client is at least 40 or 41 weeks, then the doctor will ask the client to go for a uh, membrane sweeping to initiate labor. If the client has done what before the says you should go, Hello. Actually, the yeah. membrane sweeping is done That's for the initiation of labor when the people or when the client is pulled okay. So, so we don't do membrane sweeping no, when no, the, no, no. the labor has been initiated already. Okay. It is mostly done when the client is pulled to initiate the labor. Thank you. Yes. That is exactly what I was saying. Hello, Hello. 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 I have a suggestion, Nadia. Please, I believe when we are doing the membrane sweeping, we should also consider the fetal weight. Okay. What the scan has shown, isn't it? Hello. Yes. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello. 
please, the memory is the thing that they are talking about. It's like yeah. eating to a normal labor, not normal labor. Okay. You said it is done in abnormal labor. Yes, yeah. not normal labor. <laughs> Okay. So with this, we are talking about uh, membrane stripping and whatever. Please, we are saying that if you know you are not well first for this, you don't try it. We have done for those who are in post care in the pregnancy was dated and that is why we do the membrane sweeping not for somebody who had already initiated it was dated now there's another thing that please you are distracting the class the the keep quiet keep quiet so we are talking about from premature rupture of membranes. We are saying that sometimes membranes may rupture prematurely, but then when the membranes rupture suddenly, prematurely, the first thing that the midwife does is to conduct vaginal examination. Hello, Adia. From when there's premature rupture of membranes. Hello, Adia. Maybe the patient when the patient is in a queue, she's taking her drugs, she ruptures her membranes. What will you do as a midwife? You have to look for a, a place or a wheelchair or a stretcher and send it to the delivery room. You are conducting really in this sense because you want to do out cord collapse. If the membranes rupture prematurely or suddenly, the possibility of the membrane of the Lipoaminine sweeping the cord out is also there. And so you want to avoid cord prolapse. And that is why you have to leave your hand there. If even the woman is in labor and you want to do V, uh, you want to rupture the membranes, please, once you use the amnion hook or the membrane spears to tear the, the membrane, your hand will still have to be in the vagina for the lipoamina or the amniotic fluid to sit slowly. The reason is that you don't want the amniotic fluid to come out with pressure because as it comes out with pressure, it is going to sweep the cord out and it will lead to one of the obstetric embedded. Cord prolapse is one of the obstetric images which you have to prevent. Mm -hmm. That's why in normal view, when you do it and accidentally or intentionally rupture the membranes, don't take your hand out. Leave your hand there so that you reduce the speed or the force with which the amniotic fluid is coming out in order to prevent cord prolapse. So that's what I'm doing. Please. If it is ordinary problem, like the woman comes and she has not checked memory for the father, that is the same thing that you do. Sometimes the mothers are leaking. She's just missing life, but she will make the whole thing look like problem. You know, from premature rupture of memories, that is problem. So, as a midwife, if you want to know whether it's true that the woman is losing life, or like oh, you don't do V, please mind the note of this. If the woman is losing life, oh, don't do vaginal examination. Why? Because it is part of the membrane that is torn. And the woman is losing life oh, through the torn membrane. If you do V, you are going to tear more membrane. And when it happens like that, then you don't you can conserve the pregnancy. You can't conserve the pregnancy. It's losing life for you to do it. But for you to be sure, for you to be sure that it is life for that she's losing and not urine, because we just said that frequency of nutrition 
is one of the signs of true labor. So for you to know that, you ask the patient, you lie in the retrogonomic position, the legs are packed. Ask her to cough deliberately. Tell the woman, Mami Bowa, intentionally, she's coughing. She makes an attempt to make oh, oh, She does that and because she's exerting pressure. She doesn't feel like off, but you said it's off. She does that and if she's losing life off, you, you observe the urethra and the vagina orifice. Then you tell her, Mami Bowa, she coughs. And if she's losing life off, you see a gash of life off coming from the vagina. Then you know she's losing life off. So that's why you have to check whether she has fractured my face. If it is frequent of nutrition, because of the pressure that is for the bladder, giving that kind of gases of fluid, and she thinks she's losing life, she, she, she deliberately coughs, and then urine will gush out from the urine tract. Urine will just gush out from the urine tract. Then you know that it is not like her. But rather frequency of nutrition. That's his. So you advise her to apply perineal part and change it frequently. She should try to wash the whole fat and not the vagina. She should wash <coughs> the whole fat with plain water so that she will not be smelling of urine as she moves along. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, time is up, and uh, I have been pushing that. It is time, time is up. So we have to end the lectures unless somebody has a special question that she needs clarity, then I will clarify it for her. Yeah. Uh, the next time that we go to your great to talk about the stages of labor, please, I want you to go and read on the stages of labor. First, second, third, and fourth stages. The noise is too much. Hey, please, she is talking. Like oh, and you are not sure. Oh. <laughs> To go and pay their school fees. Hello. For this note, if you know you haven't paid your school fees and you haven't registered the courses, please do better do that. This time we are not going to allow anything of that nature. Try to pay the fees, get the receipt, do the registration with your center coordinator. Then you'll be free. You see, you see, have made it so pleasurable that at least you pay 50%. <laughs> then the next, uh, the marketing to make them is that you pay the rest. And you'll be free. They are still investing without oh. paying the full They will not allow you to attend the lectures. So please, mm. now, next time, please, I will be there. They will be. Hello. 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 ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Hi. I don't 
I'm giving you reading that one. We'll go and read that place. So okay. that let's talk about when we read. We can go and read on the stages of labor. And then the please, please watch it. Please, I said, and read on mechanism. Okay. Who is making that noise? Yeah. Please, have you noted down the assignments? I said, go and read on physiology, physiology of first stage of labor, and then mechanism okay. of labor. Physiology of first stage of labor. First stage of labor. And then the stages of labor. The management of first stage of labor. And then mechanism of labor. Please, what did I say? Management and then mechanism. Thank you very much. 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 Th